Today we're going to cover the essentials for a road trip in an electric vehicle. I'm Luke. And I'm Rachel. And this is Spinner EV. If you're new to electric vehicles or you're thinking about getting an electric vehicle, uh, one of the main concerns that people have is how well can it road trip. And an electric vehicle will road trip just fine, but there are some essential things that you need. The number one essential is going to be planning. You don't want to take your brand new electric vehicle on a nice long road trip without realizing that there are not public chargers at every exit like there are gas stations. So you need to plan. If you want to do the short version of planning, you go to an app called, I'm working on getting it here, you go to an app called a Better Route Planner. And a Better Route Planner, you type in your starting location and your destination and what kind of car you're taking the trip on and it will load up your charging stops. Put that up here in a display, it'll tell you where those chargers are, it'll give you an estimate of how long you need to stay there and all of that, and it'll give you an idea of your time. Uh, how long the whole trip will take. If you want to go a little bit more in depth, you can use the PlugShare app. You can do route planning in the PlugShare app, but PlugShare is vital for just knowing where chargers are and what condition that they're in. People who are on road trips will check in and they'll talk about which chargers are working, which ones aren't, which ones are giving the best speeds, which ones aren't, uh, and you can plan a route. I've planned a road trip using PlugShare without using a better route plan and I'll link the video on how I did that right there. Once you've planned your route and you know what chargers you're going to be using, it will save you time on your road trip if you go ahead and download the apps you need for those public charging networks. Some trips are all going to be on Electrify America if you're driving a CCS car, uh, but you may need to use EVgo, you may need to use ChargePoint, you may need to use EV Connect or Red E or any one of a number of public EV charging networks. Uh, to, main, to continue your road trip. It will save you time if you download those apps and set up your account from the comfort of your own home. Put in, enter in your card number on your phone, you know you'll have good signal, and that way you can just check in on the app and you're ready to charge. These public charging stations sometimes will have uh, card readers and RFIDs, but they don't always work. It's best if you're using it as a guest to, uh, to check in on the app. Now, if you're road tripping in a Tesla, you just need the Tesla app, somebody's in trouble, and the Tesla app will memorize your car and the, the car will guide you to them and, and all of that, but it's still a good idea to know where those chargers are. Next essential thing that you should do while you're planning is find out where those long stretches are, where the, you're going to have a long charging stop because you got a lot of distance to the next to the, next, uh, to the next public charger, see if there's a place to eat around there. We like to eat, it's good to eat. And obviously you can just find a restaurant or a grocery store that's near the charging network or that particular charger and find some place to settle in and have something to eat. Now we don't, you know, constantly but eat all the time just just <laughs> want to make sure that that's clear but um only at lunchtime or at dinner lunchtime. time <laughs> so if if you know that you're going to be there long enough to have a lunch stop or a dinner stop maybe you base your departure time from your home so that you can get to that long charging stop at lunchtime or you can get to that long charging stop at dinner time and that way you plug the car in you go in you sit down and you have your meal and you come out and the car is ready to go and it doesn't feel like you were sitting there for 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, it reduces that sensation of waiting. Emergency preparedness in an EV. The first thing you're gonna definitely make sure you have is your emergency charger. This will actually charge into a level one, which is any regular plug. So uh, if you are having an emergency and you need to plug in somewhere, just find any external plug. You cannot use an extension cord with this though, but keep this in your car. Uh, we have our Tesla to J1772 adapter from EV Base. Uh, I've got a review to this product up here. We use this on our last road trip to Tennessee because sometimes hotels that have destination chargers don't have J1772 plugs and you need the adapter to plug in to get that charge overnight. This will not work at a fast charger. Those are coming either from Tesla or GM for us to be able to, to use uh, Tesla superchargers in the future. Another thing that you need to have with you on a road trip, 
is this is some kind of spare tire kit like this. It's got an air compressor that'll plug into your 12 volt outlet. It's got tire sealant in it as well. Uh, most EVs, and especially this uh, Chevy EV Bolt, uh, Bolt EV did not come with a spare tire. They do that to reduce weight in the car. There is a, a little bit of room down here in the back of the car as part of a trunk. And there are other YouTubers out there that have made videos of how you can use a, uh, the donut spare out of a Chevy Cruze. And if you can get one of those at a junkyard with a jack and uh, a lug wrench and all the stuff that you need, you can have a spare tire in here. We don't do that. We just operate off of this and keep an eye on the, uh, the tire pressure monitoring system. The other thing is we have this first aid kit, which we never use, but you keep it anyway. I guess most of you probably keep this in your gas powered car as well. And then we also have an extra blanket. This one says Nissan on it because we got it at an auto show. You never know when you need an extra blanket. Depending on what type of EV you own or that you're road tripping on, check the forums for that car online, Reddit, Facebook, just do a Google search, and you'll find out what tools are best to keep with you in that car. For a Chevy Bolt, I highly recommend a 10 millimeter wrench. Uh, if the car's computer ever gives you an issue, you can take that 10 millimeter wrench and disconnect the negative terminal of your 12 volt battery and that can help the car reset. Also, while you're under the hood, be sure you touch nothing orange. That's, uh, they're orange so that people know this is a don't touch. If the car's in an accident, firefighters know don't, don't mess with that. That's where there's a lot of high current. We also have a screwdriver with a lot of fancy bits that Rachel carries along with us. But depending on your EV, check the internet forums. Somebody's gonna say, hey, this is a must-have tool for this road trip. Make sure you have that must-have tool. One thing that can make a road trip go by nice and quickly and be kind of relaxing is if you have some entertainment with you on the go. So what are some of the things that we use for to keep us entertained while we're driving or while we're waiting at chargers? We like audiobooks. We'll pick out a book ahead of time, so something that we're excited to listen to, and we'll listen to those on the way. Sometimes we like music. And don't underestimate the power of just talking to each other. Conversations. We can have some nice long conversations. I think our three quarters of our trip back from Tennessee, we just spent talking with each other uh, and with our work schedules. You know, when else can we when else can we really spend that much time just having a conversation? Road trips are but, the only time we talk to but each when other. You, no, we talk at the, anyway. <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, but having a car that's got uh, Apple CarPlay is uh, is a benefit because we've we're able to listen to um, audible and your library app uh, we've got a Sirius XM subscription you don't want to rely on terrestrial radio because you know the stations are gonna fade out after you get a few hundred miles down the road and you gotta spend some time finding the next one and all of that or you can just listen to some podcasts podcasts are great uh, when we're charging that's usually we catch up on a lot of our business at charging stops checking right. checking emails and and things like that responding to comments on YouTube videos we'll do that while we're out at a, at a charging station mm -hmm. but there's plenty of things here in 2023 almost 2024 that can keep you entertained over a long distance staying eco-conscious one of the things that I do when Luke is fiddling with the apps and trying to get the charger going is I'll just check around the area near the charger and just clean up any trash that's nearby. I'll clean out our car and also if there just happens to be any random trash in the facility, I don't want to leave that there. I want to try to make a place better than it was when I got there. Essentials as far as charging just kind of goes into your behavior. So first we'll talk about some charging etiquette. It's best for you to choose the charging station that is best suited to your car. Now, if you're at a one plug charge point or a one plug EV go, you don't have any choice. But if you pull into an Electrify America and your car can't take more than 150 kilowatts of power, try not to park at a 350 charger and leave those 350 chargers for the cars that can. Try not to park at the Chatamo charger unless you have a Nissan Leaf because that's literally the only charger that they can use. Um, don't charge beyond 80% unless you absolutely have to. Pretty much every EV is going to slow down its charging speed above 80%. You've got to change your mindset when you're road tripping an EV. You don't want to fill your tank up at every stop. You want to get enough power to get to the next charger. That will save you time and that will save uh, the charger for someone else to use it 
later. And also, before you leave the charge station, if you had a successful charge or not, either way, leave a check-in on PlugShare to let, let other people know what's going on with that charging station. We charge to get enough buffer to get to our next charge stop plus 50 miles. And usually we will uh, lose some of that buffer. And if we get below 20 miles and you find yourself losing your buffer and getting a little too close for comfort to the end of your range before your charge stop, all you've got to do is slow down. Dropping your speed from 70 miles an hour to 65 miles per hour will stop that buffer from going away. And of course, our road trips take a little bit longer than yours will because we take too much time filming. And, and re-filming and redoing takes when we screw things up. Yeah, we, we mess up and that we don't happens. want you guys, to, we, 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 don't, we don't share. Uh, <laughs> so those are the road trip essentials that we use on our road trip. If you found this video informative, please give it a like. If you have questions, ask it in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe for more of our content. Content. You'll find links to all of our social media pages down in the description. Thanks for watching Spinner EV. We'll see you on the next video.